there was a really good question that came from a viewer on YouTube. And the question was, what are the different ways of fasting? Yes. And it, it's such a good question, not only because there are different ways, but because when we combine them, we enter a more holistic spirituality, right? Because sometimes people don't know the various benefits that fasting can have. So yeah, there's spiritual benefits, but I also believe that fasting, if we look at the diverse ways, can even help us socially to become better communicators, to become better listeners, to become better friends. Because there are certain fasts that are um, mental and verbal fasts that really help us not only in the battle of sin, but also in the area of human development and communication. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you are someone who really struggles with pride. Maybe pride is an issue. One fast that you can consider that is a verbal fast is to go a whole week and then extend it to the next week, you know, step by step, without speaking about yourself. <laughs> now, that could be difficult for some people. You know, maybe you're one of these people who loves to be the center of attention, the, the, the person who holds court at the table, the person who's the storyteller, you know, and yeah, this could be really asking for a lot, but you know what's going to happen? Not only is there going to be growth in terms of interior humility, but also there's going to be such social benefits because you will be forced to discover more about the people around you. You will be forced to have deeper conversations. You will be encouraged to actually ask deeper questions about who they are, what are their experiences. And of course, there are other ways of fasting, right? So in addition to this verbal form of fasting where you decide perhaps not to talk about yourself as much if you're struggling with pride, uh, there's also the decision, intentional decision not to gossip, to be very careful about your speech in general, and also the mental, the interior. Let's say you're somebody who often struggles with negative thinking. Maybe negative thoughts come into your mind often. Maybe it's negative thoughts about various people. Here's a strategy. When that happens, when a negative thought enters, enters about a person that you usually dwell on, that you usually entertain, turn it into a prayer. That's right. Turn it into a form of spiritual intercession. Start to pray instantaneously for the person who's entered your mind. Why is that powerful? Because you've taken something that could be a potential vice, this inner judgmentalism and you've transformed it instead into something sacred a prayer for the individual an act of intercession so there's an interior cleansing of your mind that's happening and there's also grace that enters the world for that soul who needs it so in that sense notice how this interior fasting can really become a spiritual discipline and help a person uh, become an intercessor in their lives. And there is, of course, bodily fasting. I think bodily fasting is so important because consider how vital it is in the tradition. Consider that Jesus partook in bodily fasting. John the Baptist partook in bodily fasting. St. Paul partook in bodily fasting. The Desert Fathers, so many of the great saints and mystics allowed that austerity to be part of their intimacy with the cross, with Jesus crucified. Uh, there's a number of ways to fast in a bodily way. Um, there's the bread and water fast, very popular these days, very popular with Medjugorje devotees. Our Lady in Medjugorje, she 
encourages fasting on bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays. And this also goes back to an ancient Christian spirituality. The early Christians used to fast on bread and water. Wednesdays, because Wednesday traditionally was acknowledged as the day that Jesus was betrayed by Judas. And Friday, of course, the day of his great passion, his crucifixion. And so those sacred days have been offered up by Christians as days of sacrifice and union with Jesus crucified. And if you do decide to say yes to the bread and water fast, perhaps you're thinking to yourself, well, how much bread can I eat? You know, that's a question that I often get asked in regard to this topic. And the answer is, eat as much bread as you want. You know, it's, it's not so much a fast of quantity, it's a fast from taste. You're fasting from the taste of meats and vegetables and fruits and dairy and sweets. And in that sense, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of bread. And you know, make sure that the bread is nutritious. Make sure that you know it helps you even with nourishment. I think it's also important on such fasting days to even take multivitamins to have some supplements because they'll help you with both nourishment and with energy. You may also want to do a Daniel fast. A Daniel fast is fasting from meats, um, allowing yourself to live out the lens on vegetables and fruits and dairy. And that's also very beneficial. That's, that's also a type of fast that has that bodily component and also can be nutritious. And you know, there's a, there's a question that a lot of people have. And the question is, does it count? Does a bodily fast count if it has, if it helps me lose weight, for example? You know, then, then what separates a fast from a diet? And it's a good question. And I think the, the most important thing to acknowledge there is, there's nothing wrong if a spiritual fast has other positive consequences like weight loss. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but the most important thing is one's intention. Is my primary intention spiritual? Is my primary intention a deeper desire for intimacy with Jesus crucified? And is my primary intention also intercessory, since I can offer my fast for other people and for their intentions? That should be the primary intention. And if the other positive effect of weight loss happens, nothing wrong with that. That's great. That shows that we are holistic people, spiritual, physical, mental. And in that sense, we see how in that holism, Fasting can encompass all those dimensions, right? There is the bodily fast, there is the mental and verbal fast, and there are those fastings that also include uh, the fasting of the eyes, fasting from technology. I think that's really important because technology can become so addictive, so addictive. Sometimes um, I remember once uh, hearing a statistic a statistic that said that college students tend to spend between eight to 10 hours a day looking at their smartphones. And I think that is such a tragedy because when we fall into that type of living, we literally become enslaved to the technology and the iPhone can become this false tabernacle, something that you worship by your life because it is by what you spend most of your time in front of, that you're showing through your life what you value most. And what is your tabernacle? A lot of times these days, it's the fluorescent screen. We gotta be careful about that. I think it's wise to detach, to take occasional days during the week that become days of technology fasting. And if you're somebody who needs to check their email because of work or school, that's fine. Set up a certain time in the morning, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, or maybe uh, part two in the evening, 
15 to 20 minutes where you check your email, where you reply to your emails, and then allow everything in between. Be a day of fasting from technology, from the fluorescent screen, from the internet, from the iPhone, because it's important to become disconnected from a technology addiction in order to become more connected with the human beings around us and also with our work with studies, with prayer, with spirituality, because often the ways that technology affects our brain, it's a negative way that takes us away from these greater concentrations, allows us to denigrate our focus. So let's rewire this blend. Let's say yes to these various forms of fasting and realize that, can, that they can bring immense transformation, immense transformation, into one's life. Also, final notes. Do not get discouraged if you have already fallen. If you've already fallen in some of your fasts, remember, tomorrow is a new day, a new opportunity to get right back up, and Jesus is waiting to lift you up. So do not be discouraged. Every day is an opportunity for conversion and grace. Be at peace.